So, uh, first of all, good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you for having me back here again. I appreciate it. And uh, we're going to do 15 minutes each with our two CD2 candidates, starting out with Danny Tarkanian, who currently sits as a Douglas County Commissioner. So, first of all, why are you running? Let's start there. Well, thank you. You know, I've heard that from a lot of people, and it was a very tough decision. You know, I'm, I'm currently sitting on the Douglas County Commission. I really enjoyed my work there. I really enjoy when I have people come up to me afterwards and they say, thank you for standing up with me, being the voice that uh, I didn't have. In fact, that happened today just from my county commission meeting here today. Uh, I had to vote against the staff and uh, the planning commission recommendation because I had to be the voice for three um, small business owners that were going to get the short end of the stick. So I've enjoyed my work there, but you know, as with so many of you, we've watched what's going on around our country, and we say, this is absolutely crazy. Why would anybody allow this to happen? Now, you need to understand, Congressional District 2 is the only safe Republican seat in all of Nevada. It's a very conservative seat. It's a, very, it's a seat that, that loves the America First policies. So I moved up here with my family, and I started watching the votes that are being taken by the current representative in CD2. You know, there's two million illegal immigrants came across the country illegally last year. That's more than many states. 7,000 came across the country every day last month. That's more than Carson City, Lyon County, Elko County, and Douglas County combined. And the current representative of Congressional District 2, Mark Amaday, he's voted repeatedly to grant amnesty to illegal immigrants. Now, you know, with that floodgate opened, they anticipate now listen, th listen to this, they anticipate 100,000 people coming across the border illegally every week now. And I just, I, I look back and I say, why would anybody vote for that? And then, you know, I, I, I understand that the inflation is hurting everybody. And there's different reasons for the inflation. But one of the big reasons is our out of control spending and the debt that we're running up in Washington, D.C. So the tipping point for me uh, in getting in this race was when Mark Amaday was one of only 38 Republican congressmen who voted for the latest $1.5 trillion omnibus bill. And he came to Douglas County and he spoke at a, um, a St. Patrick's Day dinner and they said to him, uh, Mark, why would you vote for that bill? And he said, look, it, the bill was going to pass anyways, so at least I was honest and I voted for it. And I'm thinking to myself, this is what everybody's sick of in politics, is just go along, get along, and don't vote your conscience. You know, that bill had $10 billion in earmarks, $10 billion. $2.4 billion was allocated to promote gender equity internationally. I don't even know what that means or how they're going to do it, but that $2.4 billion was done that way. That bill had such a bad provision in it with the Second Amendment that uh, the gun owners of America called 39 congressmen who voted for it, including Mark Amaday, a traitor. So I was sitting there with my wife, and my wife had been encouraging me to run uh, over the past couple months, and I kept backing off saying, no, it's just not the time yet. And I finally decided, I said, hey, can we handle two more years of this? I mean, I can wait, I could have waited two years until my term expired, but do we want somebody representing us in Congressional District 2 who's voting to give uh, citizenship to illegal immigrants, that voted to give $600 million a year to Planned Parenthood? $600 million, and that's a, it's not, t it's not federal money, it's your taxpayer money, $600 million. Uh, it, you know, Mark Amade was the first GOP congressman to join the Democrats and support President Trump's first impeachment in inquiry. He blamed Trump for January 6th. So, you know, I could have sat back two years, allowed this to continue, or I just thought that our country was in such a uh, dangerous position right now that somebody had to step up who could beat him, who has the conservative values, but most importantly, has what the people in Douglas County have said about me, that I have the courage to stand up for them and fight for them, be their voice when nobody else did. So I got in the race on Friday, the last day of voting. I'm gonna tell you, I was shaken going in there doing so. My wife was all excited. I'm, I've never been nervous of any challenge in my life, but I was in this one. Let me ask you this. Um, you brought up immigration as one of the topics here. Um, how do you feel about uh, the Ukrainians um, who have left their country because of the war um, and they're coming to Mexico and coming across the border um, uh, to the United States um, through a cavalry church? that is organizing this. Um, are you okay with that? Are you uncomfortable with that? How do you feel? I'm okay with any legal immigration. 
I, I'm okay. My, look, my grandmother escaped the Armenian genocide in 1917. She watched her whole family beheaded by the Turkish army. She hid in the basement of a home of a, of a Turkey fa Turkish family, and she escaped and came to Armenia, I mean, to America, but she came legally in the right way. And if the Ukrainians are coming here legally, then yes, I'm all for them. I think we should welcome them, and I think everybody in this room feels that way. It's when you break the law, and then you reward people for breaking the laws. You know, only in Washington, D.C., only in the swamp, do you see people that pass laws that don't work, then don't enforce them, and then go out and reward people for breaking them. Um, let me ask you this. Um, you know, people have been talking about immigration reform since President Reagan signed the last bill in 1986. Um, how do you feel about that? And would you support any efforts at immigration reform, whether comprehensive or otherwise? Well, I absolutely think we need immigration reform, and that's one of the big problems we have here in our country. Neither side, and I'm talking about Republicans or Democrats, the Mark Amadei Republicans or the Democrats, uh, they want, don't want to see a solution to it. They'd rather allow people to come across illegally, not enforce the laws, and then reward them with citizenship. Yes, we do. There, there, there are workers that are needed here in the United States that I think there should be programs put in place where they can come across the border legally, work, and uh, go back across the border and come back when they're needed, or if they want to apply for legal residency, they could do so. We could find ways to make it work if we wanted to, but they don't want to do it because it's a political hot button. It's a way that they can win votes and get reelected again. And that's what's wrong with our political system. That's what's wrong with Washington, D.C. Um, you know, obviously, Mark Amaday has been in Congress long enough to get some seniority. Yeah. Um, he is likely, if this red wave is accurate, uh, to get a committee chairmanship um, on an influential committee that could benefit Nevada. Yeah. Um, if you were elected to Congress, um, then you would be number 435 in the pecking order. Um, do you have concerns that that might in the end hurt Nevada? I have concerns that that would be a question to me, and more importantly, that would be Mark Amaday's reason to be reelected. So we're supposed to reelect Mark Amaday because he's been in Congress the longest? that he's voted for the more, most pork projects and we're taking care of certain um, Nevadans here. I mean, that's what made the Republican Party um, people leave in waves when, when we were voting for people because of seniority, because they were bringing in more pork. The Republican Party today wants people to stand up and show some courage and show some backbone and stand up and fight for what the conservative values mean and what they will do. Mark Amaday has not done that in 12 years. And just because he's been in there 12 years doesn't mean, hey, now we should continue to keep him in there because he's too powerful. I will tell you this also. Mark Amaday is in a safe Republican seat. And in a safe Republican seat means he, does, he hasn't had a tough re-election. The most money ever spent against him in a primary has been $45,000 by Sharon Angle. The most money spent in a general election is 450000 last year. I had $6 million spent against me in 2016 when I lost by 1% to Sharon Angle. So what, what does Mark Amaday do in a safe seat? He takes 170000 from incumbent Republicans so that he can get reelected, and he only gives 140,000 back to candidates running for Congress. And this is over his 12 years, 140,000 over his 12 years. That's why he hasn't moved up in 11 years in the Republican Party. Now, if I get elected, I'm going to raise some money. I'm going to help other Republicans get elected. They're going to say, hey, you know, Danny took care of me. I'm going to help vote him on a committee. I'm going to move up much faster than Mark Amberday has in 12 years. Do you believe that politics is the art of compromise? It is the art of compromise and persuasion. The compromise isn't like what Mark Amaday has said about the $1.5 trillion budget, where he says, hey, I brought back some of this pork project here, so I'm going to ignore all the horrible things that was in there. Compromise has to be that you get the better part of the bargain, that you're getting more of what you want than what you're giving up. And the way you get that is through persuasion. Politics is the art of compromise through persuasion. As I mentioned to you, and, and folks, um, you'll be more than welcome to go to our website, nevadanewsmakers.com, and see a full half an hour interview with Danny. I brought this up during the interview, um, that Barbara Vukanovich, um, uh, who was certainly a very conservative person, um, told me that she had voted for bills that on the surface looked against her political philosophy, but that there were so many good things for Nevada in those bills that she felt she had to vote for them. How, how would you feel about that? 
Well, I agree. First of all, I love Barbara Vukanovic. She was one of my idols growing up. She was very, very close friends of my family. And again, it's exactly what I said. If that bill contains more provisions that are really beneficial to you and you got to hold your nose on, <clears throat> excuse me, on one or two things to get across what you really want, that would be great. But let's talk about that $1.5 trillion budget, okay, that Mark Amade just voted for. There was $10 billion in earmarks. You know how much Nevada got? You know how much Mark Amade brought back from Nevada? One tenth of one percent. One tenth of one percent. And he thought that was worth it. How about the provision in it in the Second Amendment that infuriated gun owners of America so badly that they called Mark Amadeo a traitor? How about the fact the bill puts, gives $600 million to Planned Parenthood of your taxpayer money? I mean, are you telling me one tenth of one percent of the earmarks is worth all of those things? Let me ask you about uh, the number one topic I'm sure you're hearing on the campaign trail as well, uh, which is inflation. Um, and what things would you recommend uh, to the Republican Party in Congress uh, to curb inflation? Look, there's, there's several things that are causing inflation right now, not the least of which is, is President Biden's horrible um, um, move to re restrict uh, uh, the United States from being energy, energy independent that they were when President Trump was in office. But the one constant that causes inflation is government spending and the debt that's being increased. Now, look, at we, we all feel bad now. There's $30 trillion, $30 trillion. I want you guys to let that sink in. $30 trillion we have in debt right now. $14 trillion of that has been since Mark Amaday has been in office. Now, that $30 trillion is going to grow exponentially when interest rates go up, which they are now. And when you have a debt that's old like that and you have government spending that's out of control, like this $1.5 trillion, you see a, a, an increase and inflation, and everybody's paying the price. It always feels good to get something immediately, something that you say, hey, look at, I brought back this money for Nevada, and it feels great, but how about the fact that you're paying so much more for gas, for food, for, for electricity? That's the cause of, of out-of-control spending. Um, you said earlier that uh, Mark Amaday has been ineffective and ha holds no real leadership position, so how are you able to blame him um, for the spending in Congress, if I blame, he's only one, one I blame vote. him for his votes. If he had some courage and he stood up and he said, hey, this $1.5 trillion bill is, is not worth it. It's not, it's not worth what, uh, what's, what the, the good part in it. Then I'm going to stand up and vote against it like 120 other Republicans did. Then I'd say, hey, yeah, you know what, Mark? At least you're showing some honesty and some courage by it. But when you go along and you vote for it because you said it was going to pass anyways, yeah, I blame him for that. Um, do you feel that, uh, um, you know, when, when you're going to be de debating on Nevada Newsmakers here in the next week, so we're very excited to have Monday. that debate. Um, you know, do you feel that, uh, you know, the Republican Party bears responsibility for a good portion of this debt as much as the Democrats do? Because um, a lot of this debt was incurred during the Trump administration as well as the Biden administration. It wasn't just no. one party that, that boosted the, the debt by so much. And because of COVID. Look, under Trump, at least, we had the greatest economy since, um, I don't know, 60 years. And if you start counting the increase in, in um, the, the wage increase along with the unemployment rate and the, and the increase in gross domestic product, you say, wow, it's really wonderful. So, yes, some of his uh, expenditures, like the tax break, it really helped the economy out. But it is a Republican's fault, too. And George W. Bush, he spent, he, he increased the debt greatly when he was in office. And, yes, we need to have Republicans that have some fiscal responsibility, some courage to stand up and say, hey, we're not going to kick this down the road. We're not going to make the poor people suffer the most because inflation goes up and they have to pay for the, those essential needs or that we're going to kick this down the table to our kids and our grandkids. Yes, it's a Republican's fault, too. And it's more the Republican's fault because we're the party of fiscal responsibility. The Democrats, the party of handouts. Um, one last topic I think we've got time for here. Um, how do you feel about uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine and what should the United States be doing if it's not doing enough right now? I think it's one of the worst things that's happened in my lifetime. I never in my world did I think that a superpower, now we're not talking about ISIS or some crazy terrorist group out there. We have a superpower that's slaughtering children. 
I mean, buildings that say there's children in there, they're slaughtering them. Or that you see as they just reported a, a, a Russian um, a leader telling his soldiers, kill everyone, kill all the civilians. When in our lifetime have we seen that? It's horrible what's happening. What should we do? We need to, sub we need to support the Ukraine with every kind of military weapons they can. I'm not in favor of putting American troops on the ground, but we certainly can provide them with the military weapons, and we should be providing them with aircraft, which they're not doing right now. Um, what about a no-fly zone? I, I would absolutely go forward with the no-fly zone. No, I know President Biden saying, oh, it could cause World War III uh, and so forth. But look at we, we supported Sam the Afghanistan when the Russians went in there. We gave them all kinds of military equipment. It didn't start World War III. In fact, it ended up allowing the Afghanistans to run Russia out of there. Why can't we do the same for the Ukraine now? Well, I think the difference is that uh, Russia was not directly involved in that conflict with the United States. It was a proxy war. And so in we, which we, conflict? We, in, in the Afghanistan conflict. Okay, so again, it, we're not directly involved in Ukraine if we give them weapons. We gave them all kinds oh, of no, weapons I'm not in Afghanistan. But I'm, I'm Sam, just saying... It's a good discussion, but we need to cut it off. Okay, <laughs> we're at 1456. So, Danny, thank you very much, and good luck on the campaign trail. Thank you. I appreciate it.